This is what the World Pool Masters is all about. The title and the trophy are on the line as we prepare for the final. It's been a long, hard road. We started with 16, some former champions, one defending champion and plenty of star names. Two have emerged from the pack, both recent winners. Only one will claim the 2018 Mansion Bet World Pool Masters title. The story of the opening semi-final is all about one man and an incredible run of eight consecutive racks that rescued his fading dream. Nils Fine left Carl Boys as a spectator as he went on the rampage and it's the Dutchman who became the first man through to the final. Fine had also made a big statement in the opening round with an impressive 8-2 win over Raj Hundal. In the quarterfinals he overcame the talented Dennis Orcolo in a tight match and then came that impressive display in the semi-final. Shane Van Boney faced Jason Shaw in his semi-final and was dominant from the opening rack. He claimed four racks without reply as he went in search of his third Masters title. Shaw had little to offer as Van Boney made the most of every opportunity. The scoreline reflected the balance of play, 8-3 to the American. From round one, Van Boney had looked confident, dropping just two racks to Darrell Peach. In the quarterfinals, he came up against Darren Appleton and looked comfortable there as well. And then, of course, that semi-final win. Fine waits for him in the final. Once again, it's a race to eight with the winner breaking. Commentary from Carl Boys, Ted Lerner and Phil Yates. We've seen some extraordinary pools, some great stories here at the Victoria Stadium over the last three days. And now it is the climax, the conclusion of the event. And we're still no wiser as to who is going to lift the silverware. I think the way they played in the semi-finals makes any kind of prediction even tougher to make. Yeah, this is, uh, I don't know what the odds are, but I would have to say pick them right here. Yeah, Carl? I mean, um, both played great in the, the semi-finals, so it's a tough one to pick, but I'm going to slightly favour Shane Van Boning. Well, and you might say that because, uh, well, Shane has been playing great, so has Niels, but... Uh, Neil's coming back from that long layoff. Maybe that's why you could say that Shane is a fa slight favourite. Well, I do believe Shane's got a really good head-to-head -head against Neil's. I think he beats him a lot. So, you know, it does it does count for a lot, that, you know, in the, in the sure mental does. battle as well. So it'll be interesting to see. I mean, Neil's wins the lag, does it? Yes. Yes, he does. Yes, and that lag, lag is very important. Gives the player a chance to get off to a flying start. Put a little heat on your opponent straight out of the box. <coughs> and without wishing to straight. open up old Winner wounds breaks. with Carl here, but... He was fine to break. Fine. has won eight consecutive racks. <laughs> Cheers, pal. I'll leave now. <laughs> Who needs friends? <laughs> no, I mean, the uh, close the match out great. Look really good in the semi-finals and sometimes it's not easy to to do that back-to-back -back. it's like playing golf where you see a professional shoot 62 and then the next day they usually shoot about 78 so it will be interesting to see that dry break though got a good spread on the balls but nothing went down Shane getting the cue ball clean there. Obviously a bit of chalk where he's hitting the ball. And he does have an opening shot here on the one ball. We know that Ralph Suke has won this title on a record six occasions. Currently, Shane Van Boning is tied with two others in second place on the all-time pantheon of World Masters champions with two wins. Wants to be second alone on that list. Well, that's a very, very useful flick on the seven, that. Sure, it was. Wow. Yeah, he touched the seven ball coming off the rail, and that helped out.
Here we see it. Just the friendliest of nudges. Yes, also on two wins in this tournament. From Germany, Thomas Engert, and from the Philippines, Francisco Bustamante. Stato. Mr. Stato, yeah? <laughs> and Shane's looking good for this rack now, after the useful flick on the seven. Do you think it's any advantage, Carl, the fact that he was involved in the second semi-final, so basically he's going on warm? Yeah, I do think there's a, a bit of an advantage there, for sure, because obviously Niels has played the first semi-final and he's had to go upstairs in the practice room and probably hit balls on, on that table, which plays so much different to the TV arena and it's such a quick turnaround. Shane's not really had a chance to do anything, has he? He's just straight back out there, so... Yeah, I think he's, there's a slight advantage in that. But then some people might say Niels has had a chance to have, have a bit of a break, so maybe personal well, certainly, preference. Yeah, you'd, I, think, I think what you said about Shane being probably a little looser would be true because he's certainly not tired. I mean, it, it, maybe if it had been a long day where they played one of these five or six match tournaments, but he only played, you know, Two today. Well, that was a pretty nifty way to start out. Shane Van Boning is such a formidable opponent. The one mystery, of course, is why he doesn't perform like this, and this form doesn't translate into the Moscone Cup. If it did, the European domination might be a little less than it is at the moment. I have a theory about that. I just think that Shane, he is deaf. You can see the uh, hearing aids in his ear, and Shane grew up sort of living in his own world, doing his own thing. He's a, he's a guy who likes to do his own thing. He's not somebody who would you consider a leader of a team. Yeah, he's a loner. And, and anybody who knows Shane, you see him when you on in these events like this, he doesn't hang out with a, the people in the bar after the matches are over. And uh, Shane is more of just a solo player. He likes to be by himself and do his own thing. I don't see him being comfortable in that team situation. I'll tell you what, he's comfortable with that break. The three ball going in, pretty much at the last gasp. The one and the two, sitting pretty, away he goes again. I don't know, Carl, what do you think? Why Is, it, is that anywhere close to uh, I mean, yeah, the possibly, truth, perhaps? Yeah. Um, in your experience with uh, hanging out with him, playing yeah, with Yeah, I think having played in the Moscone, it's, even though the Masters is a short race to eight, you can still sort of be a bit more relaxed and... Obviously, you're playing for yourself as well with a Moscone race to five. It's like the slightest little error, and you can it can literally just cost cost you the match, like because it's only a race to five. So you you tend to play a bit slower in the Moscone, if that makes sense. You, you're trying to take a lot of care as well with this. You know, Shane's a very fluent player, and he likes to get on a roll, and you know. Just get call. these racks one super quick, and That's before true. you know, it's like three, four nil, and he's halfway there. As where I don't know the Moscone, you've got obviously you know yourself. It's there's like two thousand people there. And well, yeah, those short shouting. races, you yeah. really can't. There's no roll to get on. <laughs> well, that was a malfunction. Played for the pink four ball, and he snookered himself. Yeah, it was a poor shot there, and he's just trying to kick this and make things happen, but you never know where it's going to go. And I think he's left a shot for Niels. So sure has. An early break for Niels there, because it was looking like 2-0. But he's got to judge this shot well, come all the way back down the table for the five. So pace is key on this shot. Extension called. Yeah, it looks like he's digging down on the cue ball here to spin this round. 
He's got to avoid the seven. Seven's the big ball here, and he's missed it. A nice shot, that. He certainly must be surprising himself here this week after coming off a six month layoff due to that tennis elbow injury and uh, playing this well and this relaxed. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's, he's been injured, he's had a break, but you know, he's a very, very professional player and he's known for putting plenty of hours in so he's not going to come here feeling you know like he's not in stroke if you like because he's put so many hours in back home practicing you know he does everything right and it just looks like the same old Niels to me It's a well-played rack from Niels here. Yeah, and it was a mistake from Shane, so... Is that an early sign? And it was a gross misjudgment as well, because he was pretty much full-ball snookered behind the eight ball. That was the escape. OK, made contact, but left the chance, and from there, Fyan equalised. You know, I'm just thinking, it's exactly nine months to the day, to the start of the 2018 Moscone Cup. The incentive for Niels Fyant is that if he wins this tournament, what a foundation that is to earn a selection. And said no one can doubt his credentials because, as we've already told you, between 2011 and 2015, he was MVP for Europe on four out of five occasions. Uh, he, he loves the Moscone Relaxing. Cup. He, was fine to break. he is a big time player. He won the 2013 Whirlpool Masters, and then that was the springboard for Niels to go on to win the 2014 World Nine Ball Championship. He's been at this game for well over 20 years now. Oh, look, he just jumps out of his shoes. This will work out nicely. Yeah, and the good break continues. There you see it, another ball made, and a very, very generous split. No balls covering each other. Everything goes in a pocket. This is a lovely split. On a consistent basis, the table is broken better tonight than in any of the other sessions. Yeah, for sure. It should be plain sailing, but we said that in the previous rack with Van Boning, so don't count chickens. Yeah, I mean, there's always a sort of shot that can possibly go wrong, and I think in this rack, it's going to be the eight to the nine. So from the seven ball, he's got to make sure he gets a natural angle on the eight, so it's just plain sailing to come back down for the nine. Now you see him just checking the, the angle he wants. Extension called. Nicely done. Well, he looks good. 
Yeah, it was a very generous layout, to say the least, off the break shot. So fully expected him to clear that table to take a 2-1 lead. Niels Fine, well rested, came here full of determination. There's still an awfully long way to go in the final, but right now he is looking as solid as you like. He leads Shane Van Burning by two racks to one. The final, well underway. This is the 15th and closing match of what's been a cracking tournament. The Mansion Bet World Pool Masters of 2018. We've reached the final and Neil Svein has made the better start. Two on ahead as he breaks off in rack four. And it's another successful break there. Look at this. He's really getting the, the break going here. Two balls on the break. He's got it going on on that break shot. And he's left with a little tricky shot here on the one ball. He's got to play this into the far left pocket. And it's a blind pocket shot, we call it. And he's got to sort of soft draw this just to it before the middle pocket. So it's not an easy shot. It's a little tester. Oh, and it's right in the heart of the pocket. This is good signs for Neil's fine fans. Connect the dots, Carl. Yeah, I mean, this is this is just elementary nine ball pool now for Niels. Just making sure you land the right side of your next ball still. Because you don't want to land short on the six, so you're sending the cue ball around the table. And he's really got into that. That needs to hold up. That needs to hold up. Wow, he got into that ball. Look at that. But it's actually not too bad up there. But he really got into that. Maybe a bit of adrenaline there early on. This is as sharp as I've seen Niels playing in quite some time. Indeed, and with that, another break and run out. He leads by three racks to one. And so Shane Van Boning snookering himself in the second rack is beginning to look more and more significant, more and more expensive from his perspective. So they're playing for very high stakes here. $10,000 to the runner-up, $20,000 to the champion. And of course, serious consideration, one has to say, for the Moscone Cup. The captain for Europe this year, as he has been for the last few years, is Marcus Schumacher from Sweden. It's his decision, but I'll tell you what, Niels Fine in top form is a hard man to ignore. Yeah, I mean, you have to fancy him, um, Niels, making the team this year. And there you see another successful break, but as you see, the seven balls come round and just tied it up. There you see the seven come round. What's with that seven ball? It's always the problem ball, right? Causing problems after the break. <laughs> You're saying it's just the seven. <laughs> Seems like it. Yeah, he's just trying to play a little duck shot there, and I think I think that's pretty good. Yes, sometimes simple is best. Sometimes there's no options.
I'm just wondering if he can... Well, it looks like he can go off the cushion just to nick it. Extension cold. If he can, he has got an opportunity to go off the bottom cushion just before the side cushion and maybe pot it. But from the overhead view... Yeah, he's going to just try and flick this and duck the cue ball in be behind the seven. He must be able to see more than this than... Yeah, he's played it bad. He's not yet that good well, at all. That couldn't have been worse. Yeah. I'm not sure if he could have got there. He was trying to get a full ball hit on the three just to leave the cue ball there. And there you see it. And that is the worst case scenario. And it's horrible when you're sat in your chair there and you're 3-1 down and you look at the table and your opponent's got Extension call. all the balls in the open and it looks like going 4-1. And he's been breaking pretty good. Yeah, and he's breaking like God, I mean. Yeah, that's a nice shot. Good speed there. couple of times on the close-up shot we've seen Fyan at the table shaking. Now, that's not unusual in the world of snooker. The best in the business, the world number one and current world champion, Mark Selby, he does the same thing. You can see him just have a little bit of movement down there, and I think that indicates just how much it all means to him. No bad thing having nerves if you can control them. Well, I mean, I think everybody who goes out in the arena, you, you know, you, you do feel nerves, but I think it's a good nervous energy type thing rather than you're just going to collapse and fold on the floor. But he's looking good here, his kneels. Everything seems to be pinpoint, right side of the ball. Yeah, he is playing precision. He's focused, but he's also relaxed. He, he, you don't often associate the word relaxed with Niels Fine. He's a very intense player, but you can tell that he came here this week refreshed. You know, he, ha he was forced to step away from the game because he simply could not play due to the injury. And when stuff like that afflicts a sportsman, it's only natural for them to think, is this going to be career-ending or long-term? So to be here and be involved is a relief. And to be this far ahead in the final, 4-1, halfway to his ultimate goal, well, that's bordering on dreamland. I've been to a tournament where I've like had a really bad head cold and just didn't even want to play. And I've actually played really good. So it can sort of take your mind off it, and you're thinking, oh, I'm not going to play good, I don't feel well. But so you don't have that pressure. Yeah, you just, it's, it can be funny. So, you know, maybe he's come here with no expectation, just see what happens, and, you know, he's found himself in the final, and obviously he's got a 4-1 lead, so he's looking real good. But as we said, things can Thank change so quick in nine-ball pool. Leading but four racks to one. he is breaking really good. He's really getting a lot of power into this break and getting the getting the rack moving. And there you see. Wow. That's three balls. Whoa. That's three balls going. That's four balls. Four balls. There's down. no balls left. <laughs> but no shot on the two. Wow. Look at this again. I think it's appropriate at this juncture to ask this question, Carl. What's the most balls you've ever seen potted on a break? I've seen Alex Pagalayan pot six, and he had three balls left. It's actually on YouTube. He had three balls left, and he missed the first shot. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. The one yeah. ball that's left here is the six, and that's the obstructing ball, so he needs the jump cue. And, and he is very, very handy with this jump correct. cue. Correct. I was just going to say that. He's one of the best in the world with this thing. That's why he's not really scared of just going over for it and having a look. He's not even thought about a push out here. He's gone straight for the shorty. 
Extension called. I think the I think what he's looking at here is if he jumps it, I think he knows the cue ball's coming down in between the seven and the eight. So he's not happy where the cue ball's going to go. But he's having a go. Yeah, he's disgusted with himself there. <laughs> he's, he's not hit that very good. He's, he's hit that full ball. And this lets Shane back to the table with a chance to cut this two ball in. And how many times do you see the two ball to the six ball? The three, four, five's gone. But that's not very often. He needs a flick. No, it's not the best of flicks. So I think he's going to be ducking here. There you have it. Made sense, though. Total sense. And by getting the, the cue ball so close to the, the brown seven, increased the level, of the level of difficulty here. You can see Shane just looking at this line. Two shots, two, two rails. There you go, two. Just to hit a full... Mm, oh, no. You won't be happy with that. That's oh, pretty elementary. Off two cushions for Niels. Start the clock, please. The main thing you want to do there is just make sure you hit the ball. And you have to believe now, Ted, that's gifted the rack to Van Boning. Well, sure. This is his chance to get back in it. He's got to uh, give us a Shane Van Boning special, a three-pack, a four-pack. Turn this match around. There's nothing worse at this level where you... Come out of a snooker and miss the Can ball. Flash off, please. Give ball in hand. Flash off. Nigel just telling somebody off in the crowd there. Somebody had the flash on the camera. Ball in hand after you miss a snooker is a very severe punishment. Often the death knell for Iraq. And it certainly is in this one. The final living up to expectations. Lots of incident, lots of quality pool. Neil's fine. Halfway to victory. This is the culmination of the Mansion Bet World Pool Masters here in Gibraltar. Shane Van Boning breaking off in rack number seven, trying to reduce the deficit. Where's the cue ball oh, going? It's no. gone. Point in hand. That is disaster. That is major disaster. Start the clock, please. And he made the one ball. Let's yeah. have a look. Did it get kicked? No. So Shane lost control of the cue, very uncharacteristic for Shane Van Boning. He's one of the best at the break in nine ball. And you look around for clusters and even though there is one, it's a pretty simple one to solve. Yeah, this is um, this is the big shot in this rack now. He's just going to make sure he comes back down the table for this four ball into the pocket near where he stood. And that's pretty good. He'll be happy with that. Does the brown seven go in the middle very easy? Because if it does, 
This is just connect the dots. I mean, it might even go past the, the eight ball as well. I'm just trying to find a problem here, Ted. That's what I'm doing. I don't think you're going to find one, Carl. No, I think you're right. No, oh, he's just come around the back of it. That's lovely. Confident queuing by Niels Fyen. Thing with Niels and all these, he, do, he doesn't walk around the table, does he? Have you noticed? It's like big strides. <laughs> he you know stalks I mean? the table. It takes him like two strides to get from one end to the other. <laughs> <laughs> big strides around yeah. that table. <laughs> he eats up territory. <laughs> yeah, he is very into it right now. He's he's what we call being. He's in the zone. Oh, he's in a big zone. He yeah. is in the zone. He's got the, the body language, speaks volumes. Niels Fyen moves to 5-2 up, three from the title. When you scratch on the break in any round at this level, more than likely it's going to be costly. Midway through a final, boy, does that sting. That really hurts especially when your opponent steps in and takes absolutely full advantage, capitalises to the max. Yeah, and the way Niels is breaking, it's hard to see him not putting a ball off the break. He's getting that much movement on the rack. One well, interesting number here is Niels Fine just looks at this. The continental composition right, of the Niels winners the of this tournament over the years, to 16 European winners. Four from North America, four from Asia. So this could be the 17th European champion in 25 attempts. There you ball go. down. Look at the one ball. It's there just it is. Wrestle over the pocket. Oh. Neil's doing a little bit of a boogie there. Yeah. Well, he knew that just. If that's seven, hey, it's that seven again. You called what it. What is going on with the you've brown called seven? It. it is the seven all again. day long. That's the the one putting the spanner in the works. I'm not sure he can even go off the side cushion here. No, there you see it. That's what he's looking at. It's a very attacking shot, but the one ball is near the pocket and he's having a go. This is attacking stuff. I mean, I don't blame him. Oh, look at that. What a shot. Is it your day? Oh, it, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, you want to win, you go, you bust down the front door and not through the back door. Yeah, and he's been rewarded here. Look at this. You know about that, Carl, right? Got to go, you know. You've got to attack bust the table. That front door down, kick it down. You're right, and <laughs> he's been rewarded. And at first I thought the cue ball were gonna sit on the red three, but it's not. It's actually absolutely perfect. You know what they say, fortune favors the brave. I think that's gonna be a key shot in this match now. You probably are correct. Just the shot of confidence that gives Niels Fyen as he edges closer to victory. I'm just looking at Shane. You can see he's... Uh He's going through a bit of despair in his chair there. Look at that. I know how he feels. Anybody know how to read body language? <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a degree in reading body language to know where he stands in this match. The more you've won, the more defeat hurts. And he realizes that defeat is a distinct possibility, even a probability now. 
because the Neil Swyan bandwagon continues to roll on. He's a juggernaut this evening, both in the semi-final and so far in the final. Six to ahead, two more rucks needed to regain the World Pool Masters title. It's a head shaker for Shane. So that's uh, three break and runs for Niels Fyen in this match. And that was the key shot right there, an attacking shot on the one, kick shot. And then fortunate to get on the two ball. And from there, he just ran him out. Lucky rack nine, Niels Fyen to break. Leading six racks to two. Yeah, there you see again, he's making that one ball. He's got that breakdown. And look at this again. This is another beautiful layout. No clusters, straightening on the two ball. Just, just this, this is just, this is begging. This is, this is going to take something catastrophic not to get on the hill here. Let me tell you. And this time the seven doesn't get in the way. Yeah, Ted, the seven's not in the way. <laughs> Almost. But it's the funkiest ball on the table, so there's a little bit of something there. You know him well, Carl, Neil's fine. He's the emotional sort because considering what he's gone through, if he were to go on and capture this title, would the the tears start to flow? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do believe he will give it a good old cheer, of course, but... Um, he's going to go, come on! Yeah, he's going to shout something along that, that type That's of line. That's what Neil's always does when he wins. Um, but I don't think there'll be Yeah, I don't tears. see Neil's uh, No, he's too, he's too machine-like for that. Well, we've had enough waterworks with the weather here, so maybe we don't <laughs> need any more. And I think it would be extra satisfying for Niels, not just, of course, winning the, a major like this is, uh, you know, always going to feel great. But just the fact that, that of how he's doing this after this uh, six-month layoff due to injury, it's got to feel... So, so satisfying. Yeah, I mean, you can just... You, you, you've you've just sensed it after he beat Orcolo. He's just been a bit of a man on a mission, really. You can see he just looks really confident at the table. He's not... Every shot's going in the, the heart of the pocket and it's going in solid. There's no, like, you know, quitting on the shot. Everything's going in at a good sort of pace. And just these three balls for a 7-2 lead. And just to be one away from the title. But you know, Ted, when you're 7-2 down, you can still win. Yes, indeed. You know something about that. Well, you didn't go on to win the title here this uh, year, Carl, but that was perhaps the most memorable match. It yeah. is 7-2. Wow, that was tremendous. It really was. Niels Fyen in the mythical zone, firmly on the hill. He's going to be difficult to dislodge. He's five in front with a possible six racks to play. Shane Van Boning on the verge of defeat. We know that European pool in general is in a very good place at the moment. Niels Feyen, the man of the moment, is in a really good place here in Gibraltar. 7-2 up in the final. One more rack needed to be crowned World Pool Masters champion. And let's have a look at this tremendous break he's been doing today. The one ball again, look. He's got that break. But the two ball has been kicked up 
to the top rail and a possible slight little chance for Shane. Yes, Shane will be getting a chance. And this was about the position you were in against Ralphie last night. It was dark days. Yeah, I was sat there looking a little bit like Shane. Yeah. Dejected. Just wondering if Niels is looking at trying to play a carom off the right hand side of the two ball to make the eight ball. I think that's what he's looking at. Yeah, there. That's what he's trying to line up. I mean, he doesn't know where the two's going to go, but I mean, I don't blame him for having a go at this. Now, would this be the type of shot? Let's say it was Hill Hill. Would, would that you wouldn't be taking that shot? Mm, maybe. It's, yeah, I mean, it is a different story then, but it's risk-reward, I suppose. You know, you if he feels like he can make the eight, then why not have a go at shooting it? I think he's going to try and duck, though. No, he's played it soft. Maybe a bit of a two-way type shot, but if the eight goes in, obviously he snookers himself, so... I think he, he probably did play safe there. With the pace, he played it just to send the two up the table. He obviously judged the cannon on the eight really well there, so it's a clever shot from Nils. Just to give you some indication of how well he's played overall in the tournament, Nils Fine. If he were to win this rack, his frames one loss record would be 32-4, 13 against. Well, Well, that's not going to work. Nope, and... Here's Niels' first chance to win this title. Can he get on the three ball good? And there is your answer. It's perfect. Carl, tell us you've been in this position when you're on the cusp of a major pool victory and the balls are there and you're clearing up. What are the emotions? Well, I mean, you're just trying to keep things simple, really. You don't want to make any silly mistakes. Um, but I think that the, the thing with this one is he's obviously just clearly dominated the final. He's, he's broke really well. He's had all the chances. And I don't think he's going to feel like, you know, it's not like it's seven all. And... It's been a really to and fro match and it's been nip and tuck and <laughs> change been the game. I think because he's been so dominant, I just I, I don't even think he's, he's, he's concerned. And said, what about the irony of this? Shane Van Burning's two previous appearances in the final of this when he won, he beat Nikos Economopoulos 8-2 in Nottingham. Then he beat Darren Appleton 8-2. And now he's in danger of being beaten 8-2 himself. The wow. cruel symmetry. Interesting fact totem there. But uh, it's just a few more balls here to the title. He's missed it. Oh, no. He's missed it. Wow. Have we seen a little turning point there? You just never know. Look at this. Amazing. And what ball does he miss? The one with the national colour of Holland. Oh, oh Phil. Wow. Where Good have you pulled one. that one out from, Phil? That's genius. Well, a lifeline thrown to Shane Van Boning. Still a long way to go, though, but you never know. Well, there's a seed of doubt now in Niels's mind that's not been there in the last two matches. And I don't want to be the harbinger of doom but I'll tell you what if by some miracle Niels Fyan does lose this he will never forget that shot as long as he draws breath and there we have a look at it look just a simple little cut shot just to avoid the six come back out but he misses the five you're so right though Carl that 
seed of doubt has been planted. It's just a matter of whether it will be allowed to germinate and grow and dominate his thoughts. It's all about what happens now with the opportunity. If Niels gets faced with a difficult shot or a difficult layout, you just never know. But if he gets a kind layout at some point, then obviously he's probably still going to run that rack, you would think. And he's made the one ball. They're both making the one ball in the side. And he's he's in here, you know. He's got a chance. Shot on the two. He's got a chance. So the balls are breaking good now. This is the best we've seen in the three days here in Gibraltar. It's been tough going for the break shot for most of the players, but uh, things seem to be opening up. Uh, and that could be just in time for Shane Van Boning. I think this... This shot here is a bit thinner than it actually looks on the TV screens. That's why he's taking a bit of time. Oh, he's played that well. He has played that really well to avoid any kind of cannon on the nine and the seven. Found a lovely gap. Certainly Shane can play loose now because uh, he was being written off by us and everyone else watching here and on television, online. And that's a poor shot though, Ted, you know. He's just flicked the four ball onto the cushion. So now the cue ball's gotta be traveling, so he's gotta, don't think, can he hold this ball? Or does he have to use a couple of cushions? Now you see it, he's gonna try and come around the back of the five. Is it gonna get there? Wow, look at that, just misses the five. Well, what was nerve-wracking and not so good for Niels Fine has been great for the final. As a contest, it's been reinvigorated. And you just never know in the game of nine-ball pool what can happen. Once that momentum swings on a winner break format and you start applying the pressure back on your opponent, strange things can happen. Wow. A break and run. Another one. Amazing. Has he figured out the break shot just in the nick of time? 7-4 and still at the table shooting. Well, from the brink of defeat to now having realistic hope. That's Shane Van Boning. As for Niels Fyen, he's sitting there feeling decidedly uncomfortable, thinking, why did I miss the five? Why, why, why? He rack 12, Shane Van Bonen to break, trailing four racks to seven. Has he made a ball? He's not, you know, oh no. Well, Look wait. at this. A one nine? Does the nine go? Shane's expression tells me it does. Oh. What a gift this is. Here it is for the title. What a gift. I'm not saying it's easy, but he could have been faced with something a lot tougher after that missed five ball. Boy, Niels just sprinted out of his chair. That is just unbelievable. Oh, this is, this is as good as a gimme as it gets, to be honest, looking at that camera angle. Yeah! And there you see it. 1-9, oh! the title was on the line. And Fyan, this time, didn't crumble. Stood firm, and he doubles up on Shane Van Boning. He wins by eight racks to four. Well done, Niels Fyan. You had a lengthy break away from the game, but what a return. Back with the proverbial bang. The Dutchman overcomes the American.
A terrific exhibition of pool, not just in the final match, but throughout the tournament. Well, now to conduct the trophy presentation, our colleague. Here's Ted Lerner. OK, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the awarding ceremony here at the Whirlpool Masters. Your runner-up to receive $10,000 and this beautiful medal. From the USA, Shane Van Boning. <laughs> here to receive the $20,000 winner's check. This beautiful trophy and the title of World Pool Master for the second time from Holland, Niels Feyen! Niels Feyen writes his name into the Masters record book. He joins an impressive cast of multiple winners, which include Shane Van Boning, alongside greats such as Francisco Bustamante, Thomas Engert and the legendary Ralph Suke. <music> Nils Fine, a winner back in 2013, adds the 2018 Mansion Bet Whirlpool Masters title. <laughs>